Hi friends, in this tutorial series, we'll be implementing examples using Spring Boot and Azure. In this tutorial, we'll be securing the Spring Boot application, which we'll be deploying as an Azure web application. To implement the security, we'll be making use of app registration and managed identity. For this, we'll be taking reference of my website javainews.com. So go to Spring Boot Azure. In the Spring Boot Azure tutorials, the tutorial that we'll be implementing today is secure Spring Boot Azure web application with managed identity and app registration. So go to this tutorial here. In a previous tutorial, we had deployed the Spring Boot application as an Azure web application. Also in another tutorial, we had secured this deployed Azure web application using Azure Active directory. In this tutorial, we'll be securing the deployed Azure web application using app registration and managed identity. For this tutorial, we'll be creating two Spring Boot projects named employee consumer and employee producer. So the employee producer, it will expose a get rest endpoint, which returns a JSON and the employee consumer, it will be consuming this JSON. Later, we'll be deploying the employee producer and employee consumer Spring Boot project as Azure web app services. We will then be securing the deployed Azure web app services using managed identity and Azure app registration. So for the deployed employee producer Azure web app services, we'll be adding authentication using the app registration and using this app registration will be whitelisting the client IDs that can access the employee producer APIs. Any other services trying to access the employee producer APIs will get 401. Using this app registration will be whitelisting the client ID of a managed identity that we'll be creating and this managed identity will attach it to the employee consumer Azure app service. So now whenever the employee consumer it wants to consume the APIs exposed by the employee producer, it will first using the managed identity that is attached to it, get tokens from the Azure Active Directory. These tokens the employee consumer it will pass in the headers to the employee producer. The employee producer using the app registration will first validate the tokens that is this request it is coming from a whitelisted client ID and if it is then it will return the response else it will get 401. So let us begin with the implementation part. We will first be creating the employee producer Spring Boot project. So this is a Maven project that we will be creating. So go to Eclipse, create a new Maven project. Create a simple project. com.java news will be the group ID. Artifact ID I will be giving it as employee producer. Next in the pom.xml we'll be adding the required dependencies. So the dependencies that we'll be adding in the pom.xml is the Spring Boot Starter Web dependency. So copy this. Next we'll be creating a model class named employee. In Sourceman Java we'll be creating this class. Package will be com.javainews.model. Copy this. Next, we'll be creating a controller class named test controller. In this class, we'll be exposing a get rest endpoint with the URL slash employee. In this test method, we'll be creating the employee object and returning it back to the user. So the client which will call this URL slash employee will get the employee JSON back as a response. So let us create this controller class. So here create a new class. Name test controller. Package will be com.javainews.controller. Copy this. Finally, we'll create the Spring Boot Bootstrap class, which will help us start the Spring Boot application. Create a new class. Package will be com.java news. Copy this. Also, we want the Spring Boot application to run on port 80. So, we'll create a new file named application.properties. And here, we'll be specifying the server.port as 80. Let us start the Spring Boot application. Run as Java application. So, here the application has started on port 80. You can now go to localhost slash employee. Here we get the employee JSON back as a response. Next, we'll be creating the employee consumer Spring Boot project, which will consume the APIs exposed by this employee producer. So this employee consumer project, it will be quite similar to the employee producer project. I'll just copy this and I'll name this as employee consumer. Next, in the pom.xml, the dependencies will be the same. I'll just change the artifact to employee consumer. In source mean Java, we don't need the model class. Also in source main resources, since the producer application it is running on port 80. I'll start this on port 8080. Finally, in the employee consumer project, we'll be changing the controller class. So we'll be exposing a get rest endpoint with the URL slash consume. So in this method, we'll be writing the code to consume the rest endpoints exposed by the employee producer project. So here we define the base URL as localhost slash employee. So this is the address on which the employee producer project is running. Next, using the REST template, we'll be calling this base URL and the response will be just printing it and returning it back. So let us make this change. So copy this. Let us now start this employee consumer project. 
सो रन एस जावा एप्लीकेशन सो ये दी एप्लीकेशन इट एस स्टार्टेड ऑन पोर्ट 8080 नाउ गो टू लोकल ऑफ स्टेट 80 स्लैश कंज्यूम सो ये दी एम्प्लॉय कंज्यूमर इट एस कॉलिंग दी एपीआईज एक्सपोज्ड बाय दी एम्प्लॉय प्रोड्यूसर एंड रिटर्निंग एस बैक दी रेस्पोंस Next, we'll be deploying the employee producer and employee consumer as Azure Web App projects. So, for this, we'll need to create a Docker file. So, let us first deploy the employee producer as Azure Web App. So, here, create a new file named Docker file. In the created Docker file, we'll be having the following content. First, we use a Maven image with Open JDK. Next, we set the work directory as Home App, and we copy the entire Spring Boot project to this work directory. Next, using Maven, we'll be building this project so that a jar is created. Next, we use the image Open JDK 17. and we copy the jar that we had created previously to this location and we name it as app.jar for this docker container will be exposing port 80 finally we run this image as a docker application using java hyphen jar the name of the jar that we just created so let us make these changes for the docker file next using this docker file let us create the image for the employee producer for this the command is docker build hyphen t java news hyphen producer paste dot so java news hyphen producer will be the name of the image that will be created copy this also we have the docker desktop running locally so go to the command prompt this so here the docker image named java news hyphen producer has been created next we'll be uploading this docker image to the azure portal so that we can create an azure web app so in my azure portal i have a container registry named java news app i will be pushing the docker image to this container registry for this we'll first need to log in to the azure portal using the command az login so here i am logged in to the azure portal we we'll need to log in to the azure container registry to which we'll be pushing this image to for this the command is az acr login hyphen n the name of the container registry so copy this so we are logged in to the container registry name java news app before we can push the docker image to the azure container registry we we'll need to tag the image with the azure container registry name so for this the command is docker tag the name of the image which is to be tagged and then image name along with the acr tag so copy this So now we'll be pushing this Docker image with the ACR tag name to the Azure Container Registry. So Docker push the name of the image with the ACR tag. So here the image is getting pushed to the ACR. So here we have successfully pushed the image. If we now go to the Azure portal in Services, go to Repositories, and here we can see the image that has been pushed. Next, using this pushed image, let us create an Azure Web App for the Employee Producer Service. So here go to App Services, create a new Web App, give a Resource Group. I'll be giving this as Java News Producer. We'll be publishing this as a container. Next, go to the container. Here, select Azure Container Registry. So the image it is automatically selected as that is the only image in the Java News App Container Registry. Click on Review and Create. Create this web app. So here the deployment is complete. Go to the resource. So the Java News Producer service it has been deployed on this domain. Go to this domain here. The URL is slash employee. So we are getting the employee JSON back correctly. So we have successfully deployed the employee producer service as an Azure Web App service. Next, we'll be deploying the employee consumer as an Azure Web App service. For this, we'll be making some changes to the employee consumer code. So previously in the controller class, the base URL it was localhost slash employee. This is because the employee producer we had deployed it locally on port eighty. Now that we have deployed the employee producer as an Azure Web App service, so we'll be putting that URL here. So copy this base URL. The test controller class of the employee consumer. Add this. The other change that we'll be making is previously we were running the employee consumer code on port 8080 as locally employee producer was running on port 80. Now that we are also deploying the employee consumer as an Azure Web App service, so I'll make this change. So we'll make the server port as 80. So the employee consumer it will also run on port 80. Previously for the employee producer we had created the Docker file. The same Docker file we'll be using it for the employee consumer. So let us build the Docker image for the employee consumer. So Docker build hyphen t the name of the image base dot. So we have already logged into the Azure portal and also to the Azure Container Registry. Let us tag this Java News Consumer image with the ACR name, and let us finally push this Java News Consumer image. So here we have successfully pushed the Java News Consumer image. If you now go to the Azure portal, Container Registries, go to Repositories. Here we'll also see the Java News Consumer image along with the previously pushed Java News Producer image. Let us now create the Azure Web App service for the Java News Consumer image. Create a new Web App. Give the resource group name. I'll be giving it as Java News Hyphen Consumer. We'll be publishing this as a container. Go to the containers as your container registry. Select admin credentials. Select the image as Java News Consumer. Review and create. Finally, click on create. So here the deployment is complete. Go to the deployed resource. So this is the URL on which the Java News Consumer service has been deployed. Go to this URL. Here the URL will be slash consume. 
so we are getting the response back correctly so the deployed java news consumer app service it is correctly calling the deployed java news producer web app service and returning back the response finally that we have deployed the employee producer and employee consumer as azure web app services let us begin with the authentication part we'll be adding authentication to the deployed employee producer service using an app registration so we'll be creating an app registration using java news hyphen registration so for this go to the azure portal go to app registrations here we'll be creating a new registration i'll be naming it this as java news hyphen reg register so the java news hyphen registration it has been created next go to the employee producer web app service in settings go to authentication here click on add an identity provider select the identity provider as microsoft so we'll be picking an existing app registration in this directory it will be java news hyphen reg select the client secret expiration as 180 days so later we'll be modifying these additional checks to allow access from the deployed employee consumer service for now keep it as it is for unauthenticated request we'll be returning back 401 click on add for the deployed employee producer service we have added authentication using this java news hyphen reg app registration here go to edit and here we will allow request only from specific clients later on we'll be adding which specific clients so save this let us once restart this service as we have added the authentication so here the service set has successfully restarted now let us try to access java news producer service directly and here we get 401 let us now try to access the deployed employee consumer service using the deployed java news consumer service so for the employee consumer also we get 401 as it is trying to access the deployed java news producer service next in the azure portal we'll be creating a managed identity and the client id of this managed identity will be whitelisting it in the app registration that we are using to provide authentication for the employee producer also this managed identity we'll be attaching it to the employee consumer so now whenever the employee consumer it wants to access the apis exposed by the employee producer it will first get the tokens from the azure active directory using the managed identity once it gets the tokens it will add these tokens in the request header and then make a call to the employee producer the employee producer will get those tokens and it will validate those tokens with the azure active directory and it will know that yes this client id it is whitelisted and it will allow access to it next in the azure portal let us create this managed identity so here go to the azure portal go to managed identities and here i'll be creating a new managed identity select a resource group i'll be naming the identity as java new hyphen identity review and create create Next, go to this deployed managed identity. Copy this client ID. We'll be authenticating this client ID in the app registration that we are using for authenticating the employee producer. So here, click on edit. Here, select allow request for specific client applications. And here, I will be adding the client ID of the managed identity that we have just created. Click on save. Next, we'll be attaching the created managed identity to the Java news consumer. So here in settings go to identity user assigned select add and here select java news identity so here this identity it has been attached to the java news consumer service now that we have attached this managed identity to the employee consumer service using this managed identity the employee consumer it will generate the tokens that will be used for authenticating the request to the employee producer so for this we'll be making some code changes to the employee consumer in the pom.xml we'll be adding the azure identity dependency so here go to the pom.xml and add this dependency Next for the employee consumer, we'll be modifying the controller class. So using the managed identity credential builder, we'll be creating a managed identity credential. For this managed identity credential, the client ID, it will be the application ID of the managed identity that we have just created. So this will be the application ID of the Java news identity that we just created. Next we'll be creating a token request context object. So this object, it will specify what the tokens they will be used for. So we are going to use this token to authorize the request to access the employee producer service. To the employee producer service, we have attached the app registration. We will be adding the application ID of this app registration that we have created here. So that using the token, the employee producer service can be accessed. Finally, using the credential.getToken method to which we pass the token request context, we will be getting the token and this token will be adding it in the headers as a bearer token. So let us make this change to the employee consumer port. Next, go to the Azure portal, Java News Identity, and copy this client ID. Using this client ID, we'll be creating the managed identity credential. Similarly, go back to the Java News producer authentication. You go to the Java News registration app registration. Copy this client ID. Here in the token request context, we'll be adding the scope to access this client ID. We are done with the changes for the employee consumer code. We'll need to again create an image for this updated employee consumer code. Push that image and deploy the employee consumer service again. So let us build the employee consumer image again. Next, we'll add the ACR tag to this image. 
and finally we'll push this image so the java news consumer image it has been pushed successfully go to the java news consumer web app and restart the service so here the service it has restarted let us now try to consume the apis exposed by java news producer using the java news consumer service so refresh this so here we are getting the response back correctly so our authentication is working properly if we try to access the apis exposed by the java news producer directly we get 401 but the same we can access it correctly using the java news consumer service because we are making use of managed identity that has been whitelisted to access this java news producer api if you have understood this tutorial you can download the source code from here thank you